Civil Procedure, Lecture 2, Case Assessment. Lawyers are required by the state and by the federal courts to be very careful about the kinds of litigation that they bring. Uh, it, at the federal level, we have what is known as Rule 11. This is Rule 11 of the uh, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. And Rule 11 pertains to pleadings and motions. You, will look, you, you can look in your materials that are um, on the website, and you will see that we have a link to the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure for Rule 11. And uh, it's important that we just go over those rules because uh, it's, it's, it's very significant in, in the practice of law. Rule 11 state, states, signing of pleadings, motions, and other papers represents representations to the court. Signature, every pleading, every pleading, written motion, and other paper shall be signed by at least one attorney of record in the attorney's individual name, or if the per party is not represented by an attorney, shall be signed by the party. Each paper shall state the signer's address and telephone number, if any, except when otherwise specifically provided by rule or statute. Pleadings need not be verified or accompanied by affidavit. An unsigned paper shall be stricken unless omission of the signature is corrected promptly after being called to the attention of the attorney or party. B, representations to the court. By presenting to the court, whether by signing, filing, submitting, or later advocating a pleading, written motion, or other paper, an attorney or unrepresented party is certifying that to the best of the person's knowledge, information, and belief, formed after an inquiry reasonable under the circumstances, one, it has not been presented for any improper purpose, such as to harass or to cause unnecessary delay or needless increase in the cost of litigation. Two, the claims, defenses, and other legal content contentions therein are warranted by existing law or by a non-frivolous argument for the extension, modification, or reversal of existing law or the establishment of new law. Three, the allegations and other factual contentions have evidentiary support or if specifically so identified, are likely to have evidentiary support after a reasonable opportunity for further investigation or discovery. And four, the denials of factual contentions are warranted on the evidence or if specifically so identified are reasonably based on a lack of information or belief. Sanctions. If after notice and a reasonable opportunity to respond, the court determines that subdivision B has been violated, the court may, subject to the conditions stated below, impose an appropriate sanction upon the attorneys, law firms, or parties that have violated subdivision B or are responsible for the violation. Now the rest of the rule continues to identify how these uh, motions are, how, these, uh, how the uh, proceedings are initiated. But what is important for you to understand as, as a um, person who wants to practice the law is that there are very stringent rules that are at the core of the uh, litigation process regarding the kind of uh, cases that you, uh, the kind of allegations that you can make when you are appearing in court at the federal and state level. And uh, those are very key and we called your attention to them. 